Welcome to the Praxology podcast, where theology fuels the mission of the church. Our hope is to see the church in Central and Eastern Europe equipped to think biblically, reflect theologically, and act pastorally. In today's episode, we will introduce what we are about and talk about the general question, what, what's the point of theology? Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I am with Tyler Patty. Welcome to the podcast, Tyler. Thank you. We are both missionaries serving cross-culturally in the Czech Republic with Josiah Venture. We're also facilitators and tutors with Four Mission College and the Central and Eastern European Campus. Tyler, welcome once more. And, and maybe tell us a little bit about the connection between this podcast and Four Mission College. Absolutely. Sean, it's great to be here. I'm excited about all the conversations we're going to have. So uh, the, the point of this podcast is really to... Um, helping me maybe show what we're trying to do in our college on a very practical level. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, um, Josiah Venture entered into a partnership with Four Mission College, which is a, a college in Birmingham, United Kingdom, to offer a, a bachelor's degree in theology, mission, and ministry to young leaders all over Europe. And um, we have 25 students right now from about six different countries. And uh, it's just a wonderful environment for people to grow spiritually, grow theologically, and really mm -hmm. grow missionally to understand how to join God in what he's doing. And so um, this podcast came comes out of that uh, mm -hmm. and is just a way for us to, to kind of widen the conversation because we believe theology is not just for the classroom. It's really for the life of the church. Yeah, and maybe another way of just saying that is that we want to bridge the gap that is is has unfortunately historically been placed between theological schools and churches, <clears throat> and so we want to we really really want to provide the 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 bridge that connects those two, and, and for mission just makes it really easy, right? <laughs> because everything is put through a very missional lens, which we'll, which we'll be doing in this podcast as well. Um, and that, that makes it um, very applicable. It's not just theory, but it's theory and practice, which we're going to talk about today. Um, so one of the ways in moving towards bridging the gap, the first thing we have to do, as always, is to define our terms. And so we'll, we'll look at defining theology. And then second, we'll, we'll, we'll touch upon its, its nature and its purpose. Uh, but first, I think we have to start with recognizing that we're all pictures of God in the world. Oh, Sean, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. So Andy Hardy, our, our research director with Four Mission, he, he writes a lot on this topic, um, rather rather extensively, about how we as the church are providing a glimpse or a picture of who God is to unbelievers in the world. So unbelievers perceive things about God because how the church interacts in the world. And so he, he's written several books on that. We'll, we'll link some of those in, in the show notes, perhaps, um, for those interested to, to study and, and learn further. Um, but what you say and do as a Christian in front of others gives those people a picture of who God is. And so the only access people have to God in society is through the people of God. Uh, and, and that leads really to the question, what picture of God are you, are we providing to people in our cities? It's a very important question. And some people might respond and say, well, I want to show that God is a loving father, um, perhaps to, to people who don't feel that or, or people who don't, uh, unfortunately, have, have a, a, an experience where they can relate to that. Um, and there's many ways that the question could be answered. Um, but however we answer the question, another question <laughs> comes in its place. Mm. It's the theology, right? Um, question, questions lead to questions. Um, but how, how can you know that you are providing an accurate picture of God to others? What do you think about adding the word accurate to that question, Tyler? Yeah, that's really interesting because um, the whole idea behind pictures of God is that uh, we are reflecting God whether we want to or not. We're actually created to reflect God. We mm -hmm. are made in his image. And as we are brought into his, uh, the, the community of, of, of Christ, uh, the body of Christ, we, we start reflecting mm -hmm. um, our creator and our savior. And, um, but, uh, if we look at the, the history of Israel, if we look at the history of the church, we see that mm. the body of the, the, the community of, of faith does not always reflect God, uh, in a way that is true to who he really is. And so we need to be accurate pictures of God. We don't, we don't want to, you know, portray false things about who God is mm -hmm. through our actions, through our, through our behavior, 
um, but also through our just um, our disposition, the, the the kind of the way that we carry ourselves. So we have to be very, we have to be th- thoughtful about it, reflective. Mm-hmm. Thoughtful and reflective. I, I like those terms and I'm thinking of a, a biblical example uh, along the lines of what you're talking about of the, the Thessalonians pulling up, a, can we say a lawn chair or something, um, so to speak, on, on the rooftop of their houses because they've been told that Jesus is returning imminently, uh, very soon. And so they're kicking it back and they're waiting for Jesus to return. I don't need to do anything because it's going to be soon. And they, they sort of missed the point and Paul tells them so. Um, but that gets us to the idea of right right belief leads to right action. And they, they had a, a right belief, yes. just sort of incomplete, um, but it actually led into their action of just kicking it back and relaxing instead of following through with, uh, well, well, things that Jesus has told us um, in Matthew 28 uh, with the Great Commission. Um, so those really are the stakes, rightly proclaiming and showing God's character to people. So we'll, we'll dive into this further and bridging the gap begins with, with how we define. And, and as we're approaching, we'll, we'll come to some very concrete definitions in just a little while. But we have to first recognize that we all have an unconscious bias. We all start somewhere. And so for some, perhaps uh, perhaps me, perhaps you, Tyler, have a, have a tendency to want to to bias the the highly academic uh, as a starting point. We do love our our books. We do. On our bookshelves, multiple bookshelves. Books are great. Books are great. And everybody says they make good Zoom backgrounds, but that's not really the purpose of books. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but but academic starting point, a very well thought out definition, very, uh, very precise. Every word means uh, something very, very specific. And that has its place. Um, and others maybe are starting with a local church starting point, um, which is, is more along the lines of biasing or wanting to start with things that are very practical first, which makes total sense when we're in ministry on a daily basis dealing with people. Uh, but if we want a robust theology that also um, blesses the church, really, and furthers, furthers her mission in the world, then we need, we need something more than just academic definitions um, and something more than just practical definitions, we need something that sort of says yes to both of those things and brings them together. And so it's better then that we have conscious practice by beginning to carefully think about our approach to theology. Um, And I think the worst thing that we can do is to simply just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and, 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 and never, um, never really know why. And so Tyler, in, in, in trying to to bridge the gap here of an academic definition, a practical definition. What do you think about the idea of theology as conscious practice? And maybe can you provide an example for us? Yeah, absolutely. So theology is, is conscious practice. That means that we are practicing things. We're practicing, we're putting into practice the truth that we believe in a very intentional way. It doesn't happen on accident. And, um, an example that comes to my mind is, um, uh, Back when I was a teenager, um, I was involved in some English camps uh, in the Czech Republic and uh, had the privilege of being on the leadership team. And at one particular camp, um, I remember a a girl was there who had never really interacted with Christians before, had never heard the gospel. And um, she had the chance to, to hear about Jesus for the very first time. But actually what made the biggest impact on her and her perception of who God was, was actually watching the way that Christians interacted with each other at this camp. They were a picture of God. They were pictures of God. Exactly. And, and I think it, it was intentional uh, as, as a team, we really wanted to be united and to show, uh, show the love of God uh, in the way that we loved one another, which that's <laughs> the world will know you because of, uh, because of the way that you love each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, the, you know, the evening talks where, where the gospel was explained were, were really important, important part of this girl's, um, her, her journey. But what actually kind of was the, the breaking point was recognizing, wow, this is something I've never experienced before. Not only love between one another, but also love and acceptance toward this girl as well. And she at first was actually concerned that, you know, this was a little bit of manipulation, like, oh, you're being nice to me at camp. But Mm -hmm. what about afterwards? You know, Um, but uh, but I think she experienced a little bit of of who God was in a very intentional way. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, it, it sort of reminds me of, of an example of um, <clears throat> one of our students, actually, who's um, doing doing ministry that um, has has just sort of transitioned um, from doing only larger events, um, sharing the gospel through music festivals and things like that, um, and moving more towards uh, seeing seeing how local people are are functioning on a daily basis on the ground and, and moving from big events only towards very small events, so to speak, of going to local streets and underprivileged areas, underprivileged neighborhoods, um, and, and being being the hands and feet of Christ in that place. Um, and so when that happened, this, this student goes, what's, what's my role then? Because I, I'm, I'm sort of instrumental in putting on these huge events. And if we're going to do less of them, then, then what do I do? Sort of having a, a crisis of a sort. Um, and he, he didn't understand his, 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 his thinking, um, on what, what is my role? Um, and it was just sort of going with it. Um, but then, then shortly after he studied, um, in, in a, in a classroom, setting at four mission, the idea of incarnational versus attractional ministry. And he, he, he had already been doing this transitioning into doing these, these two approaches. Now the, the incarnational is, is much, very much like Jesus. He, he, he became human incarnated himself, uh, and, and came to earth and served. Um, and then th the opposite of that, that would be more of an attractional method of ministry, yeah. Tyler, which is, know? which is kind of what, Israel was called to do and be in the old Testament of, mm -hmm. Hey, live this certain way, have these practices. And, um, the, the picture in the old Testament is Jerusalem, this city that is a beacon to the nations and, and draws everyone, you know, to this place. So both of these, the, both these strategies are, are mm -hmm. appropriate. Um, but it sounds like this student is making a very intentional, you know, is reflecting and, and on what God is doing and what might be the best way to reach his neighborhood. Maybe the incarnational way is better than putting on some, a bunch of events or maybe doing a little bit of both. Yeah. And that's what his, the leadership above him said, we need to be doing more of the, the incarnational. They weren't using these words. The student learned these, these terms, uh, just a short time later. And then it, everything clicked into place for him. He goes, Oh, we just started doing this. I, I see the value and I see where that comes in from scripture and, and also both of those, because they're still doing both. So the attraction will come to this music festival. That's okay. That's fine. Um, but also we're, we're being incarnational. We're, 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 we're taking, um, <clears throat> we're, we're going to go join the spirit uh, of God already at work in these, in these neighborhoods. Um, and so this really is an example of, of good, good theology that's learned in, in the realm of human experience uh, and, and placed together. So that really, that really, functions to sort of bridge that gap, mm -hmm. um, the practical and, and the, and the academic definition colliding for the sake of furthering the mission of God in, 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 um, the local context there. Yeah. yeah. And the, and one assumption we have in, in this podcast is that theology and practice are actually mm -hmm. connected and that theology is practical. Not that we have to make theology practical, like, oh, how do we, how do we figure out how to make this work? But actually theology has so many implications for how we do ministry, how we witness, how we live as Christians. And, and we need to be having these conversations and mm -hmm. reflecting. And, and if you're listening and you're wondering, oh, how do I, how do I join in on this? Uh, what we want to say to you is you don't need to go and buy the biggest book of theology that you can find. You might want to. I might want to, but you don't have to start there. You also don't have to sign up for the first degree program in theology that you find. And you're like, Oh, I, I want to be a better servant. So I need to have a degree. That's not what we're saying. We're just, we're, we're simply saying that maybe we need to stop and reflect and consider who God is and what he's doing and how we can join him. Yeah, exactly. And so Moving, moving towards uh, act, actual definitions here, and once more, the point is not fill your library. Your, your Zoom background will look better. That's been proven. That is proven, yes. Read some of those books. Maybe don't buy all of them. And, and, and really just um, the, the point is not come, come to this school, um, but it's, it's how can we have reflective practice, good, good theology that's working out on the ground. And so 
to do that, good definition, good definitions include sort of the what, what is theology and also the why, why, or why should we do it? Um, so what's the study of God and what he's doing in the world? Um, and if, if we accept that we study theology be, because of God, uh, and, and we recognize that it's, it's his mission in the world, um, to begin with, he, he started it, <laughs> um, then, then we're, then we're realizing that we're, we're allowed and, and not just allowed, but we are, we are called and invited into that, uh, to participate in, in God's ongoing mission in the world. So God's on the move. Amen. Amen. And, and we want to join him and we can join him through growing in character, which comes from, from studying the Bible, knowing him more, um, and many other things, but also through seeking to act out his mission in the world. Um, and with that, we, we have to, to, to know the spirit of God and, and represent him well. We need to be good pictures of God, which requires us to have a good reflective practice. Um, and so moving then into some from some actual definitions of how can we define what we're talking about more specifically? So do you have any, any, any concise definitions for us, Tyler? Oh, yes. Well, uh, if, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see we have some books behind us. And I'm going to go I'm going to go snag one. Absolutely. Can you can you describe which one I'm grabbing? Oh yeah. So he's about to grab the blue book there. Yep. Michael Bird, Evangelical Theology. It's a good, uh, really concise volume. It's rather uh, thick. Tyler's holding it up for the camera for those watching on YouTube. And uh, don't, don't be um, alarmed by the size of the book. Um, it's actually very, very um, useful, very practical um, in, in a lot of the ideas that are presented. So Tyler's flipping to some pages here to, to pull open some definitions for us. Uh, this is a great introductory volume in theology and it's in, it's in, in its, uh, second, uh, second version right now. It's a, a different color now, but, um, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. So I would say, first of all, it's kind of traditional, I would say for definitions of theology to start kind of with, um, the more academic kind of, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that in these, here we go. So for example, St. Augustine, an amazing theologian, pastor from the fifth century, he defines theology as a rational discussion respecting God. Rational. Rational. Yes. Absolutely. So it's very, very much about what goes on in, you know, in your brain, mm -hmm. um, which that's, that's true. We do need to think robustly about who God is. Um, but here are some other definitions that might help us think a little bit more broadly about this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, British theologian Alistair McGrath at Oxford says that uh, theology is reflection upon the God whom Christians worship and adore. I, I like that. I think we're getting a little bit closer there that mm -hmm. it is a, uh, it is a um, thinking um, it is reflection, um, but it, 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 it's in the context of worship and adoration and really love of God which I think is really, really appropriate. Here's another one. Uh, Yaroslav Pelikan, who's a, a, an American theologian with some Slovak roots. Mm -hmm. He says that uh, theology is what the church of Jesus Christ believes, teaches, and confesses on the basis of the word of God. Classic Protestant kind of definition. The word of God mm -hmm. is our standard. It's our starting point for mm -hmm. theology. And it's what the, and it's in the context of the church as well. That it's not just what I think, what you think, but it's actually about what the church of Jesus Christ believes, teaches, and then confesses. Mm -hmm. These are all these are all great things to to include. But let's get to Michael Bird's definition. I think this is kind of where we're landing at the moment. Where sure. we're, yeah. we're, uh, we appreciate this kind of perspective. So Michael Bird, he's a he's a um, Australian theologian. He says that theology is the attempt to verbalize and to perform our relationship with God. We'll say that one more time for emphasis. <laughs> Theology is the attempt to verbalize and to perform our relationship with God. I really like both those, those elements there. It, first of all, it's in the context of relationship. That, that's really, really important that, um, that God has actually invited us not just to study him, but to know him. It's really, really important. And then our job is to, to verbalize, to speak in a way that is true to who God really is mm -hmm. verbalize. And we're putting the truth, then understanding the knowledge, the experience into words, but we're also performing. It's the attempt to verbalize and to perform our relationship with God. 
So theology can't just stay in the classroom. It can't just stay around a table. It needs to go out into the world. It needs to show up in, in the way that we treat our neighbor. It needs to show up in the way that we talk to people about God. It needs to show up in the way that we love our family, in the way that we do church. Um, it needs to be performed. So what do you think about those two elements, yeah. Sean? <clears throat> and so verbalizing and, and performing, I think it really does bring the the thinking with the doing together. And, and so uh, if we think we're verbalizing, what well, that means we have to have precise things that make sense to people. But we also need to make sense of the context. Um, and so it's not just the the books and the that which we know from from church history and what and whatnot. We're also taking into account what's going on right in front of us. Mm. Um, so that that is part of what it means to, to verbalize. And then also perform means, like in a book that I was just reading this morning, actually, on um, do- dogmatic um, theology, which is very, very concerned with very, like, ultimately precise Precision. definitions. Yes. And, and one word turns a, a whole ton of information in books. Um and this one, this one was on, on, on the Holy spirit. Um, and it, it, it even was talking about how we need to be thinking about this idea and it actually used the word, um, performance basically. And it was talking about how we need to be taking seriously that, that in, in theology, it's more than just words. Theology is words, but the Holy spirit is also known to grow in, which comes from the new Testament. And so how do we take that seriously? And it moved towards basically, um, in part, not completely, but showing that since that's true, we, we need to be thinking about our actions and therefore our performance. So it's not just the verbal, uh, it's that, that God cares about us way more intimately than just the words. Um, it should be affecting the actions as well. And so I really like that definition from bird verbalize and perform. Mm. And I think behind that, Tyler, there, there's an idea of what has been called throughout history as uh, two different terms that maybe you can define and put together for us. Um, so very much along the lines of Michael Bird's definition, just a different way of saying it. Orthodoxy and orthopraxy. Absolutely. Orthodoxy is not not necessarily we're not talking about Eastern Orthodoxy, but we're try, talking about a, a theological term to uh, that that really uh, d- is can define as um, talking rightly about who God is. You know, uh, it's true belief mm-hmm. or true true worship, orthodoxy, and then orthopraxy is true practice, right practice, appropriate practice. And so both of these need to be kept in balance. They need to go together, and that's really what we're talking about. But the the biblical text that comes to mind um, for me is is the the um, the great commandment: mm-hmm. you should love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul. Uh, mind and strength that, uh, it's not just about knowing God with your mind, but it's actually knowing God with your, with your heart, with your soul, with your entire being, and also then putting it into practice with your, with your strength as well. Mm. And we, we really hope that, um, that we can encourage you as a listener to th- consider how, how can you actually put into practice the things that you know about God and also reflect, uh, do I actually need to know more about who God is? Are, are there some gaps um, not just so I can fill my mind with more information, but mm-hmm. so that I can be a more pic- accurate picture of God in the world. Yeah. And part of that is I, I've done this or I've tried this and, and it didn't work or somebody thought that I was saying this about God and I actually wasn't. And so it, it involves uh, an extra step that I think is actually the the glue that holds it together. And so that step is is theological reflection, is 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 critically reflecting on God and God. Uh, current ministry, current experience at the same time and, and bringing those two together. And so if, if we try to, to have a, a definition, uh, not that I'm any good at math because I certainly am not, I should stay in my own lane. However, orthodoxy plus orthopraxy plus critical reflection really does bring those two things together. And that allows us then to be what we're talking about, more accurate pictures of God in the world through a more robust theology that's taking into account the experience and the, the, the books, I guess we can just summarize and say, um, that, that leads into practice. And so Tyler, do you have, do you have any final, any final thoughts on that before we land the plane for our first episode? I'm uh, really grateful that we can have this conversation and uh, excited. That this is just the beginning. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, just just the beginning. We we truly do want all of you who are who are watching, uh, who are listening, to be to be active participants while we are on this journey. Uh, truly, we see it as as happening together. Um, so, in, in in summary for this episode, I think we can become better reflectors, better pictures of God in the world through engaging well with God and ourselves in theology by also adding reflection, stopping to think about what's going on. Uh, in next episode, we're going to look at a very approachable method for doing this on the ground. It's going to help us to go through ministry, but not, not be um, so rushed we have to go on to the next thing. That's just simply reacting. And we don't want to be reactive servants of God. We want to be proactive servants of God. And this method will help us to reflect, to be able to, to hopefully take steps um, towards thinking about how we're doing that in our own lives. Uh, maybe some of it's great, and maybe maybe some things the Spirit will use and, and lead us towards growth and being ultimately better reflectors of Him. So a method for for critical reflection that includes experience and theology at the same time. That's where we're, that's where we're heading in next episode. So if you like these topics, go ahead and smash the subscribe button on your your listening device, YouTube, uh, anything on on that's just for you, for your audio that you're listening to. Um, you can stay up to date with us on new episodes and join the conversation. Please join the conversation with us. Uh, and as always, anything that we've referenced in this episode, we're going to link in the show notes for you. And we'll see you in our next episode of the Praxology podcast, where theology fuels the mission of the church. Blessings to you and may God enrich our hearts and our minds for gospel works. We'll see you next time. See you next time.